Hey guys, welcome back to the Pivot Point Trading Robo series. And we're going to be today talking about how to open trades. In the previous part, and I'll leave a link in the description if you haven't seen it. In the previous part, we looked at how do we calculate the pivot points and how do we then end up drawing them on our current chart. So once we have put that into place and now we have the pivot points on our chart, now we want to look at, okay, well, how do we trade those lines? Well, what we want to have is basically to give our user um, an a choice of selecting here whether they want to trade the bounce from the line or the break from the line and the second thing we're going to do in this part is basically giving the user a choice to either select fixed slots or select risk percentage and depending on that whether they select the fixed lot or the risk percentage of the capital we're going to open up the trades based on the input provided so this is what we were going to cover in today's part and then tomorrow we will come back or in the next part we will come back to then also have conditions like the stop loss tps whether to trail it and how to set tps either manually or based on pivot points based on support and resistance line where do we want to set the stop losses where do we want to set up the the take profits but that's for tomorrow or that's for the third part today we will look at only how to open the trades based on the decision made by the user to either break to trade the break or the bounce from the support and resistance line so let's get to it let's get back to meta editor and we'll continue coding from part one so the first thing that i'm going to do i'm going to create another enum and if you remember from part one you, you use an enum to create a trading variable type so i'm creating a variable type which i'm calling pivot point trading type and i'm allowing two values in it bounce which i'm assigning a value of one and break and i'm assigning it a value of two and then i'm going to use it and you will understand once we use it to ask our user to select a value so when we provide this then i'm saying asking for input and i'm asking for input on the variable type pp trading type which i'm defining here as either bounce or break and i'm assigning the value selected by the user as pptr choice so trading choice of the pivot point and what it does is basically if i compile it when we go back to metatrader then we have this next variable type here appearing which is trade the bounce or the break of the lines and now the user has the option to select either a bounce or a break so depending on whether they select the break or the bounce the value of one or two is selected and is stored into this variable that we have created pptr choice and then later on we can use this variable to see or to determine with an mql whether the user has selected bounce or break so keep that in mind and you will see it later in the coding how to use it now we're going to be engaging in trading operations so i do want to ask the user for a magic number so that we can uniquely identify this ea so i'm asking the user to provide an input magic number i've put a default value but the user can change it now now the next thing i want the user to provide to us is basically whether they want to have a fixed lot or they want the system to calculate the lot size depending on the risk percentage that they choose so again i have to create an enum and i'm creating an enum by, by the name of lot size type and i'm providing two values in it which is the fixed lot assign the value zero and risk percentage as one and once i have that trading type enum available to me then i can go ahead and ask the user to provide me an input and i'm saying it the lot size type by using the enum that i have defined here lot size type assigning it to a variable lot type and i'm assigning the value of default zero now if i do compile now and go back to metatrader then we will see now that the user has these inputs as well they can put the input magic number but now also do we do they want fixed lot or they want risk as a percentage of capital and here they can select either the fixed lot or the risk percentage as we has as we have asked them to do here now it's becoming a little bit crowded so i'm going to create another line and now i'm going to create another input group and i'm calling it risk and money management where we're going to ask the user for this input type so if you compile and go back now it starts to look like a little bit neater because it's in sections now depending on what they select in this variable whether they select the choice as a fixed lot or risk percentage i need them to provide me the value then that if it is fixed lot then what is the value of the fixed lot? And if it is risk percentage, then what is the value of the risk percentage? If I compile and go back to MetaTrader, now we see here that they can select fixed lot or risk percentage. And in case they select fixed lot, then this value is gonna be used, which they can change. And this value that they can also change depending on what they select here. 
Now in this part in the series, we're not going to be concerning ourselves with take profits and stop losses and trailing stop losses and those kind of things. We will come back in part three to then do that. So let's go ahead. Now that we have this, this, uh, these inputs from the user, we can go ahead and at least create the trading criteria. So this I'm going to go down and create a separate function because I do not want to code everything here in the on tick. What I like to do is create separate functions and then call those functions in the on tick to keep it neater. So we're going to create a new function and we're going to call it an open trade function and I'm creating it as a void. So it doesn't need to return any value. It's an open trade and the values that I want to send to it, I want to send it to it a double variable PP, a double variable support one, support two, resistance one and resistance two. Now we have already uh, calculated all these numbers here in the pivot point where we drew that pivot point. So from here, we can also then call the function open trade function and once again all i need to do is copy paste from here these are the values that i'm going to send to this function to run it now within this function the first thing i'm going to check is if the user has selected the ppr pptr choice which is the variable that we defined here pptr choice and if they have selected either bounce or break if they have selected bounce the pptr choice is going to be one and if they have selected break then this variable ha will have the value of two so here I'm checking as a first thing if what they have selected. So if they have selected one, then they basically have selected the bounce. And if they have selected PP2, PP2, if they have selected two, then the break has been selected. So that I can now run the codes if they have selected bounce here. And if they have selected break, then I can run the codes here. So now if they have selected bounce, then there are two things that can happen here. The first thing is that if there is a bounce back from support one, and the second one is if there is a bounce back from or back back down from resistance one because within their choice of bounce if it bounces back from support one line then i want to buy here and if the bounce is back from r1 downwards then i want to sell so i've created these two variables now in double where i'm calling the low x1 which is equals to the low point of the last candle using the time frame for the chart which we have asked user to provide so which chart is he going to be running it on five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes you can see it here so the first thing that we ask them to select is what is the time frame for the chart so the first thing that we're we're doing is we're creating or we're getting the low of the candle on the chart by using the ilo function providing the current symbol using the time frame or whatever the user has defined in the time frame for chart and getting the value of the last candle so one candle to the back and then the close of the last candle as well by using the function I close, providing the same input and getting the value for the one bar to the left. And then the third thing I'm going to need is the double high x1. And I'm calling it high x1. And that is equals to the high of the candle, the last one. So now I have the value of the last candle for low, close and high. So now I can check here that if the low of the last candle was below the S1 and the close of the last candle was above the S1, which is our buying condition. So if this condition is met, then I can open up a buy here. Now, in order to do trading operations, one of the things that we need is we need to include a reference to the file in the folder trade by the name trade.mqh. And this file is available here in the include folder trade, trade.mqh, which basically has all the codes provided by MQL in itself, which can help us in trading, uh, opening up buys, modifying conditions, and those kind of things. And the variable that I, or the, the class type that I need is C trade, and I'm gonna call, I'm gonna assign it to a variable trade. Later on, we're gonna also need a C position info which gives us the position info and I'm going to call it position. And yeah, that's it. So now that we have this trade variable already defined, now I can go down here and open up a buy trade where our buying conditions are met. So if the low of the last candle was below the S1 and the close is above the S1, that means that the candle has bounced back from S1. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a buy by using the trade buy. And at this point in time, I'm going to provide the lot size, 
as 0.01 and I'm going to say symbol is the current chart and then the price is whatever is the price available in the market so we put zero at this point we don't want to define SL don't want to define TP and we don't want to define any comments so we just have a very simple buy trade now the same goes for the bounce back from R1 so which is basically that if the high of the last candle was above the R1 and that the close of the candle is below the R1 that means that the candle has come back from above the R1 to down which means it's a bounce off of the line R1 in the downward direction so here I can go and sell and at this point I'm just going to keep it to 0.01 trade size on the current symbol no value no value no value and we're going to come back and we're going to put all these values once we will start to define the stop loss and tps and those kind of conditions so if i compile now then i get a lot of errors and that's primarily coming here yeah, because i have an open parenthesis here too many and an open parenthesis here too many so if i go ahead and compile it now yeah it's okay so let's go ahead and run it and see if the conditions are working so now here when we come to the R S1 line then we open up a lot of trades when it came back from it and then if we go and hit the R1 line and on the coming back we should open up a lot of trade then we should open up sell trades so here we are opening up the sell trades so the system seems to be working the reason you see so many trades opening is because of the fact that we still haven't put the condition of if there is an open trade then don't open more trades so the system just continues to open the trade on every tick so what we can do here is basically we come back here and in the global variable portion I'm going to create two variables which is S1 already traded and I'm saying it's zero and R1 already traded and it's zero and then I'm going to come down back to here and I'm going to say and S1 already traded is less than one so it should be zero and then every time it opens the trade I'm going to say that S1 already traded plus plus meaning increase it by one and here I'm gonna say that the R1 already traded is one oh, sorry it's less than one so if it hasn't been traded yet this line then open up the sell trade and then R1 already traded should become plus one so now if I go ahead and run it then we see only probably one trade on S1 when it came back and we're going to see the same when it happens to R1 that we only open one trade because then the R1 is already going to be traded on this line. So let's come back to our code. Now these codes were for if the user has selected bounce, then we need to write codes for if the user has selected uh, a break. Now if the user has selected the break, then the way to see the break of R1 would be if the low of the last candle was below the R1 and the close of the last candle is above the R1 so the candle is started below and it broke the R1 so once we have the break then I can just go ahead and copy the buy code from above because in this case we're gonna buy the only difference is that it's R1 which has already been traded now to see how if the S1 is broke I check that by using the same logic which is if the high of the last candle was above the s1 and the close of the last candle is below the s1 then there is a break of the candle there is a break of the support line so in that case i can go ahead and sell the only difference now that is s1 which has already been traded so if i go ahead and compile i don't have any errors now in order to test this I need to go back to MetaTrader and here instead of bounce now I need to select the break as the uh, trading method and if I start now then now when the S1 is broken yeah we will have the trades and when the R1 is going to be broken then we're going to have the, the buy trades yep now why we were getting so many trades is because we didn't define here in the criteria that if the R1 is already traded then do not open the, the trades and here we're going to do the same but we're just going to change it to S1 already traded so once the S1 has been traded once the value is going to be one so it's not less than zero so it's not going to open any more trades let's compile it go back and run the testing 
and now we should only see the S1 once it's broken. We have a sell trade. And let's see, once we have the R1 broken, then we should have a buy trade. So this is it for today, guys. I know we didn't go into the calculation of the lots and the lot size, but we still created in our the trader the input section where we're asking the user to provide the input of whether or not it's fixed lot or calculated as a percentage of the risk for the capital and then we'll come back into the next part where we will talk about the tp stop loss setting and those kind of things and that's where we will also then do the calculations for the lot sizes as well so guys please subscribe that will help the channel hit the notification button so you don't miss anything and i'll be coming back either tomorrow or day after with the next part where we will be looking at take profit stop loss and calculation of the lot size so until then stay safe trade safe